to Monday on Sunrise Cereals. I'm your host, Richard Pochard, and today we continue our carnival trip with the Shadow of the Eagle. Now, on Friday, I mentioned that one of the henchmen had a major influence on Hollywood history. How is it that someone so important is playing a mere henchman? Let me explain. Yakima Knut plays Boyle, the number two henchman outranked only by Gardner, born Enos Edward Knut in 1895. By age 11, he was breaking Broncos, and when he was 17, he was hailed as the world's best Bronco buster. He traveled the rodeo circuit, where a newspaper mistakenly nicknamed him Yakima, thinking he was from Yakima, Washington, instead of Colfax, which would have been a crummy rodeo name. And the name stuck throughout his career. In 1914, while Canute was doing a rodeo in Los Angeles, Tom Mix reached out to him to play bits in a couple of his movies. Yakima agreed, but went back to the rodeo afterward. In the mid-twenties, he was offered leading roles in six movies and left the rodeo to become a star. A bad case of flu wrecked his vocal cords, however, and when movies added sound, he could no longer play the heroic leading man. He turned to doing stunt work and quickly gained a reputation for being the best stuntman in the business. When he met John Wayne in our current serial, the two of them worked together to develop a more realistic looking fighting technique, which is still used in movies today. But that's not the end of Yakima's story. You'll learn the rest tomorrow, but for now, let's get started on Chapter 11, The Eagle's Wings. <laughs> criminal who calls himself the Eagle is plotting against the directors of an airplane factory whom he has tried to frighten with warnings written on the sky in smoke and fire. The directors have reason to suspect that the Eagle is Nathan Gregory, owner of a small carnival show, who has accused them of stealing from him an invention that is worth a fortune. Craig McCoy, stunt flyer with the carnival, discovers that the patent on which the directors base their claim to the invention was sold to them by a mechanic named Kelly, a former employee of Gregory's, who is now in jail charged with having murdered one of the directors. Gregory's daughter, Jean, pleads the prisoner, Kelly, to tell the truth and clear her father. Pat, are you sure you're telling the truth? future depends on what you tell now, Pat. All right. I'll tell everything I know. I did sell the plan to Green. But there was another man who knew about it. And he, and he's been trying to cash in on it. Who was it, Kelly? Speak up, Pat. You've got to tell us. signing my own death warrant. Too late. But I'll tell for you, Skipper. The man is... The shot came through that window. You two men get out the back way. Get Gene out of here, quick. Pat. 
that. What about Danby? Danby. Huh. You get some bandages and I'll phone the doctor. guy who was dying a moment ago, he sure is bursting with energy. Quick, say something obvious! He's gone. Good job! Turn him loose, Henry. Turn him loose? Why? He's the Eagle. He can't be. He was in the jail when the shot was fired. Kelly wasn't killed. He's made his getaway. You know, he'll probably head for the carnival grounds. You get out there and hide him. He's still in danger. Yeah, listen. What are you going to do? I'm going to the factory and wring the truth out of Danby. Evans Airplane Factory, quick. just phoned in that plane made a forced landing out for the country club. Come on. Doesn't anyone want to arrest me? We have Green. We've got to work fast. You two follow that police car. Okay. Moore, you come with me to the factory. We've got to stop McCoy. Come on.
keep quiet and everything will be all right. Otherwise, it'll be just too bad for you. Hello? Give me Mr. Danby's office, please. Danby speaking. Why, uh, Mr. Ward has charge of the boiler room. Call him. Well, I can't locate Mr. Ward, and something's got to be done quick. All right. I'll come down. Don't you never think of nothing? Don't stand there like a dummy. Yeah, that's Get the dummy's the job. Get over Craig what happened. Never mind that. Kelly gave me the lowdown on you. You're coming through right now. All right. How much? What do you mean, Danby? If nothing but money will stop the Eagle's crimes, I'm willing to pay my share. Oh, I don't want any money. What do you want, then? I want information. Information that will help me capture the Eagle and put a stop to his crimes. You mean to say Gregory is not the Eagle? Haven't I been telling you so all along? Gregory has been risking his life to find out who's at the bottom of this blackmailing scheme against you and the rest of the directors. Well, if Gregory isn't the Eagle, who is? Well, it's one of the directors of the company. Clark knew which one it was and was on the verge of telling when the Eagle killed him. I was in hopes that you knew something about it. I do know something. There's one man I'm suspicious of. Who's that? I don't like to make such a charge against anyone without more proof. You wait here while I do a little investigating. I tell you, you can't get in here. But they wouldn't let me in the front office. Why, then, stay out of here. Good afternoon, Mr. Ames. Hello, Frank. Leave the gate a minute, Frank, and come over here quick. Yes, Mr. Ames. What is it, Mr. Eames? What do you mean, Frank? Why, didn't you call me? Why, well, you're dreaming this afternoon. Hey, you! You can't come in here. Get out of here. What did I tell you? Come on, come on. Kelly's at the carnival, all right, but he won't talk. Why not? Why, he's scared stiff. Scared stiff? You mean rigor mortis? Gene and the skipper haven't shown up at the carnival yet. Hello? Come up to room 204. Yes, 204. I found the proof. I'm sure of it now. He's the man I suspected. He is, uh... Hello? Come on, Henry. Here, I have a key. All right. What are you doing here? I just heard the attack on Danby over the phone. He found out who the Eagle is. Whose office is this? This is Mr. Evans' office. Surely you don't think that... What else can we think? Don't let Evans leave the building. I believe you're right. We can't afford to take any chances. Get more men. Search the building. Question everyone. Come on, McCoy. Henry and I will wait here in case he comes back. This is all a blind. Somebody's trying to put the blame on Evans. Danby phoned from 204 and this is 206. This is 204. Hello. You better get the plane away quick. The cops are down there now.
Now, this proves that neither my father nor Craig did the skywriting. It's a radio-controlled plane. Yeah, Gregory and his daughter are there, too. You better act quick. The girl is in the plane now, fooling with the control board. Sounds like it's coming from the room yes, next I door. That plane contains a friend of yours, Miss Jean Gregory. Oh, yeah? Well, I happen to know that Miss Gregory can't fly a plane. She doesn't have to fly this one. It's controlled by radio. I'm sending it up, McCoy, up 5,000 feet above your carnival. And then it's coming down in a depth plunge, 300 miles an hour. When it hits, Call him as long as you can. Where's the call in room 206 coming from? From the laboratory on the roof. Thanks. Don't let him get away! to a head. Good thing, too, since there's only one more episode left. Tomorrow, we will learn once and for all the true identity of the villain. Have you figured it out? Well, probably, because it's really not that hard. Put your guess in the comments, then come back tomorrow and see if you're right. And do I still have to say subscribe if you haven't already? Is McCoy down for the count? Will Jean crash harder than the stock market? Is the ventriloquist still on the phone? Be here tomorrow for the thrilling climax, Chapter 12, The Shadow Unmasked. Hope to see you then. Hey everybody, it's Richard again, and if this is the first time you're viewing my series, you've already missed a lot, so why not subscribe, and that way you'll never miss another exciting cliffhanging moment. Subscribe today!